Well, they're under, it's important to understand there are two different kinds of inflation. One is non-monetary or supply inflation. Let's say you have a storm that's going to disrupt transportation and production. That'll temporarily raise prices. Or you have the war in Ukraine, affects food prices. Or you have the lockdowns from COVID, disrupt supply chains. Prices will go up. But normally, those prices will settle down when the disruption ceases. The other kind of inflation is monetary, reducing the value of your currency. And unfortunately, in the world today, central banks believe you fight that kind of inflation not by stabilizing your currency. The uh, Emirates here have stabilized their currency against the dollar for years very successfully, but other countries have not had that wisdom. And so they believe you fight inflation by depressing the economy, having less economic activity, which will bring prices down because people can't buy as much when you make them poorer. So I think that is a mistaken approach, uh, the central banks, other central banks. They should focus on stabilizing their currency, letting the supply bottlenecks be unplugged, so to speak, and uh, we'll get back on a good path. But unfortunately, central banks and uh, governments are bringing about unnecessary suffering because they're deliberately trying to slow the economy's down. The U.S. is going to go into a recession. You have to do it through uh, pressuring leaders. We have elections coming in the U.S., and I think you're going to start to see a change there. Uh, but then uh, we have to uh, make the point that the, these doctors, these economic doctors, are applying the wrong prescriptions. And uh, that comes from uh, pressure. That comes from making, uh, agitating, saying what you're doing is wrong. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what others are trying to do. Get across to the Federal Reserve, our central bank. You're not fighting this disease the proper way. You're applying the wrong prescription and you're hurting people unnecessarily. Uh, the IMF should be different, doing different things instead of having devaluations. Can you, give, can, you, can you give me an example? Well, several years ago, they told Egypt to uh, yes. devalue its pound. That's the definition of inflation, yeah. reducing the value of your currency. The IMF mm -hmm. does it all the time. Well, Sri Lanka made several big mistakes. One is when we had uh, this wrong policy of zero interest rates, a lot of governments like Sri Lanka borrowed a lot of money when interest rates went up, they suddenly couldn't finance those debts. Uh, China, they went deeply in debt with China. China's not been very helpful. Then also Sri Lanka went through a crazy agricultural policy where you weren't allowed to use traditional fertilizer. They wanted to go all natural. The result was the production of rice and other uh, staples plummeted output went down, so you had unnecessary hunger. Sri Lanka should be very rich agriculturally. That was a self-inflicted wound. And now, uh, they're, uh, now they're devaluing their currency, and so uh, they are in a crisis and they're making it worse. And I hope they get a government that reverses the agriculture, deals and renegotiates the debt, to stabilize uh, their currency, establish a currency board. And the Emirates have sort of established a, a tie with the dollar. Well, uh, the Emirates for years uh, have realized that uh, it's great to have the oil and gas, but also as an opportunity uh, to develop other industries. You see that in Dubai, a uh, huge uh, tourism industry, uh, the light industry, and you see it here. Uh, recognizing the need for diversification. And you have the right environment, stable currency, low tax regime, a government that wants things to happen. There's an old saying, capital goes where it is welcome, and capital stays where it's well treated. And that's what you're doing. Uh, that's inevitable. And uh, the question though is, when the assistance is given, 
are they putting in place policies that allow those countries to emerge in the spring? And uh, that means stable currency, making it easier to start a business, uh, having a benign, friendly tax regime. That's what should be done. So assistance, because this is an emergency. Russia is playing games with Ukrainian grain, uh, really cynical and hurting millions of people. So uh, we got to get through this winter. We also have to make sure when spring comes, the sun will really shine.